Hi everyone, welcome to a new video with me, Donny Hintikes, and today we will talk about .NET MAUI. So this is a fourth video about .NET MAUI and Telerik components. If you like this video, please the like button, and if you don't do so already, subscribe to my channel. And if you want to support the channel a bit extra, you can click the super thanks button. Before we start, I will say Thank you to Telerik for supporting this channel by sponsoring this video. Today we will export the data from the Ustats app that you maybe are familiar with if you have watched the earlier episodes that I did about the Telerik components. So we will use the document processing that comes with Telerik and that's available for all their platforms, not only for .NET MAUI. So what this video will cover is exporting to Excel and exporting a PDF, but the process will be similar for other formats as well, for example, exporting to Word. So let's open Visual Studio and go and create some documents. So here we have the application, we have the data grid that we built in one of the previous episodes. And here in the toolbar, I have had added Excel and a PDF button. So if you click this, you should be able to export this to a spreadsheet and this to PDF document. So let's start with the Excel document. What I have done before I recorded this video is that I have prepared a bit. I have created a document service that have one method saved to Excel and saved to PDF. And those methods will be triggered when you press the buttons in the toolbar. So we should start with Excel and the first thing here is that we of course want to have the video with most views at the top. So we just going to make sure we have some sorting. So we just order by descending. X, or X column views dot to list. Okay, simple link statement. So what we first need to do now is that we need to create a workbook. So we do that by creating a variable work book is equal to a new workbook. And here we can see the namespace we need Telerik Windows Document Spreadsheet dot models. So yes, let's go with that one and add a using for that. And a workbook is built up of worksheets. So what we need to do then is to create a worksheet and we do that by using the workbook. So we create a worksheet variable and say workbook dot worksheets dot add. And here if we don't want to have a variable to work with we can also do like this workbook dot active sheet and that's the current sheet we are in but I prefer to have it in a variable because it's less to write. So now when we have a worksheet we can go and add some data to it and uh, you know that worksheets are built up of rows and columns and we have cells. So the first thing we need to do is to get the cells that we want to add content to. And we will do that by using the cell property on the worksheet. So we have cells here. And here we can see we can add a cell index. We can add a cell range. Uh, we can have uh, innumerable of cell ranges. We can have a cell index from and cell index to. And we can specify a row index and a column index. And a from, ro from row index, from column index, Two row index and two column index. So, but what we can do here now is that we just say o dot o, and we can call that one first cell, just to demonstrate that. And now we can do first cell dot set value, and here we can see we have a bool, we have date time, double, i cell value, and string. So let's just try with the string first. So hello. And now we need also to save this. 
worksheet if we should be able to show if this code works or not. So we are going to do that and for that we need a path and a file name. So first we give it a file name, let's say ustats.xlsx and then, and then we create a path and then we use path.combine and uh, the best place to store data when we're using an app is file system dot app data read directory if we write it to disk and we will run this app in this demo as a mac app because it's easy to show it because you can just open it in excel but everything i show works exactly the same on all the platforms that Telerik component supporting so we use file system dot app data directory and then we pass the file name like that. And then we need a format provider. So we create one. And we will use the XLSXX format provider. Uh, when you up that one, like this. So. And now we're gonna create a stream and we can write that one to disk. So our stream is equal to new file stream, pass the path and we set file mode to create like that. So, and actually we don't need those brackets. We can just do like this now with a newer versions of C sharp. So then we do format provider dot export. And we pass the workbook and the stream. And that's everything we need to create a workbook and save it as an Excel file. And we also added some content to it. So Let's run the app and see if this works. So here we have the app and now we go and click Excel. And now we can see that it's working and now it's done. So then we can open Finder and we go to the library folder. If you don't find this one, you can just use the debugger to get the path to it. So use that stock XLSX. Let's open that one in Excel. Here we have Excel and here we have in the first column, hello. So now we can continue to add actual data that we want. So close the app and we, and we remove this test code and we will create a loop to loop through all the videos. And we do a for loop for that because I want to have the index int i is equal to zero and is less than videos dot count and we'll increase the number for every time in the loop so and then we need to get the video so video is videos and we will use the index of from the loop just like that so and now we go and create a title cell because we want to show the title of the video in the first column and the number of views in the second. So we create a title cell or actually we're getting a cell from the worksheet. So we say worksheet.cells and you can create a cell index or you can add them directly here. But this time we can create a cell index this and we add the index variable and this is always the first column like that and then we say title cell dot set value as text because this is text we can, we can use that to, to state that more clearly to the documents so video dot title like that okay now we have the title set to the document and now we also go and set the views 
So we can copy this code and we change to views cell. And in this case, we will add one here instead because it will always be the second column, the, co the column with index one. So we just say view cells here too. And then we only set, use the set value because this is not text, it's an integer. So view cells dot set value and we pass video dot views. Okay, let's try to run this and see how this looks in Excel. Okay, so now we have the Excel here, but as you can see, this uh, column is too small. If we do like this, we can auto fix the width, but we can also do that with code. So let's go here and do that. So close the application and we go and say that we want the first column by worksheet dot columns and pass zero as the index and then we say column dot out of fit width and call that method and now it will look much better when we run this app and now we can see here that we have this width fixed directly if we, for example, want to add bold text to all these cells, we can also do that. And then we can use a cell range. So let's go and do that. So here we say var view view cells is equal to worksheet dot cells. And now we pass a cell range here instead. Cell range from row index zero and from column zero. And two row index will be videos dot count minus one because it's, it is a zero based index. And two column index should be zero because we'll only use the first column. So now we have all the view cells here in a cell selection. And now we can go and make them bold by setting view cells. And of course this should be title cells. Title cells dot set is bold and just pass true. And here you can see we can add some other formatting like set four colors, set font size, set fill borders horizontal alignment. We have a lot of different options that we can do with these cells, but um, ball is good enough for us in this demo. So we run the app again. So here we have Excel and now we can see that everything in this column is bold. So that was the basics of exporting to Excel. Now we are going to export the data to a PDF instead. And for that, we will use the other method that I prepared. And for PDF, we will use rad fixed document. And that will be the root object for the PDF file, like we have workbook for the Excel document. So we go and create one more document is equal to new rad fixed document. Then we need to add a new namespace to this file. And from the document, we can create a new page. So var page is equal to document dot pages dot add page. And now we have a new page and we have it in a variable. So now we can go and add some text to this one. So let's go and add all the videos titles to it. So we create a for each loop for video in videos. Just like that. And now we'll use something called a text fragment. So we create one fragment is equal to new text fragment from Telerik Windows Documents fixed model of text. Like that and to a fragment we can add a text. So 
video dot title just like that and now when we have that fragment we can add it to the page so page.content.add fragment so let's run the app and try to export this to pdf no we cannot do that we of course need to save the pdf file too and that is very similar to what we did with the Excel file. So we go copy that code. But we will of course not use the XLSX format provider. We will use a PDF provider instead. So we just changed the PDF format provider. And here we can see that we have multiple ones. So we will use this Telerik Windows documents fixed dot format providers dot PDF because this is a fixed document. So, and now we can go and instead of workbook, say document here, and we're done. We should of course change the file name to .pdf2. I see one thing I forgot here when I said that we can use using another way in a newer version of C-sharp. We of course need to add using here too. We cannot just remove it. We need it here. So using var. So it worked. Anyway, but it's good to have this stream disposed when it's done. And here we have the PDF and maybe you can see that we have some text here in the top of the document. And the reason for that is that we also need to set the position for the text fragment. So we go back to the code and we'll fix that. So in here in the document service, we will use something called simple position and we can create a simple position by doing this so var text position is equal to new simple position and now we will use text position dot translate then we can say x offset will be 50 and I offset will be 100 and then we need to assign the position to the fragment so the fragment of position is equal to text position and now we can run the app okay it's a bit better it's not hide on top of the document but all the text are on the same place and that means that we need to update position in the loop so let's do that so we create a new start variable outside of the loop. I is equal to zero. And then here we say this will be I plus 100. And in the end we update I plus is, e plus is equal to 150 for example. Okay, let's run the application again. And that we have a lot of space here, it's good because now we can add some images to it too. But of course you can adapt this to how you want it to look. So all YouTube videos have a thumbnail, so we should add that to the PDF as well. So close the app and we go and add that one. So for that we need to fetch the image and uh, we need it in the format of a stream. So first we need a HTTP client. This is equal to new HTTP client. And then we go and get the bytes from the thumbnail. So var bytes is equal to HTTP client dot get byte array and why i have a byte here directly is because we have this method get byte array async as you maybe see we also have this get stream async but that is for asynchronous operation so we will use get byte array and we will put video dot thumbnail in here and that's just the string and we go and fetch those bytes and we need an await here and now we can convert this to stream, var stream is equal to new memory stream 
and then we pass the bytes in there. Just like that. So now we can create a new image object. Or image is equal to new image. And now we have a problem. As you can see, this is a Microsoft Maui controls image. And that will not work with this because it should be a Telerik image. So we're going to add a using at the top. So we say using image is equal to Telerik.windows.documents.fix.models.objects.image. Oh, that was a very long namespace. So to the image, we can now add, oh, we already have one with stream. So let's say image stream instead. And when we have the image, we can say image dot image source is equal to new image source. And here we can see the complete namespace because also with image source, we have a conflict with what we have in dot mouse. So we need to use the full namespace here. So we pass the stream and then we can pause image quality here. So image quality and here we also have the full namespace and we set it to high and it should be image stream there of course so and now we have the image we can set image dot width let's say 150 for example image dot height is equal to 100 and we can add it to page, page.content.add image. But if we want to have this image on the page, we of course also need to set a position for it. So we use simple positioning and we copy this text position and we say instead image position. And now we will still have it and we will still have an offset of 50 for X. And now we can say let's uh, I dot 130 instead because we want to have it below the text. So image position and we add that to the image. So image dot position is equal to image position. So now we can run the app and see if this works. And we have an Acrobat reader and we can open this recent document. And here we can see we have the text, we have the image. And now it's just for you to style your document how you want it to look. And if you want to know more about this, you can go to the official Telerik documentation because here you have a lot of good example of how to use this. For example, you have the developer focused examples and that is a GitHub repository that you can download. And you have concepts, we have colors, clipping, geometry, all the features. We have rod spread processing, we have word processing, we have zip library, a lot of great stuff that you can do with Telerik. But this was everything for this video. Now we have worked through the basics of creating an Excel document and a PDF document. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you're not doing so. Press the like button to like this video. And of course, go and check out the Telerik components because they are awesome. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.